How's it going? I'm fine. How are you? No, not too bad. Thanks. It's great to finally speak to you. Um, you're going out to about 60-odd thousand people at the moment, uh, probably one of the biggest campus stations in South Africa, so it's a, it's a great privilege to have you on air. Cool. Thanks a lot. Excellent. Um, now, let's talk about uh, all things Embrace. You're, you're pretty much a, a, a newish phenomenon in South Africa because of the fact that uh, we have just released the album, uh, The Good Will Out, um, in South Africa. We um, weren't in the fortunate position to go through the EPs and so on. But the, the, band, the band's history goes back uh, some odd nine years, is that right? Yeah, me and my brother formed the band quite a while ago, but it wasn't until uh, Steve joined about four years ago that the four of us were together, Colin Brace. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And uh, was it a difficult time, you know, was it, you know, for, for, especially in the last four years, to the point of being signed to Hat, you know, was it tough keeping the band together? Um, not really, because we all, you know, really believed in what we were doing, and it wasn't really a matter of whether we were successful or not that kept us together. It was the songs and just liking writing, you know. Mm -hmm. People often ask me if we weren't in Embrace, you know, what would we be doing? And I'd just say we'd still be in Embrace, it's just you wouldn't have heard of us. Yeah, yeah, because, um, interesting enough, uh, you and your brother um, had, a, had a very different profession before you actually became, well, you were musicians, but... Yeah. Uh, um, we used to build uh, sheds and, and uh, we used to work as laborers on a building site, yeah. And do you miss those days? You know, would you, would you give anything to go back there just for the simple life again? Um, <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, that's honest enough. <laughs> now, um, as I say, you, you, you released your album, um, I think it was, a, what, a good three months ago that the album came it's out? It's about that in England, yeah. Yeah, and you, you actually launched the album at, uh, at one of London's uh, bigger record stores, is that right? Uh-huh, yeah, we did a, a proper gig at HMV. Mm -hmm. A lot of bands uh, do like acoustic stuff. Mm. Uh, we did a, a proper gig, it was good. Yeah, yeah, and uh, to say from that point, uh, I think there'd been a, a well, the, the press and obviously your fans who have followed the EPs that have come before, um, you know, there was uh, a lot of anticipation, uh, you know, on this album coming up. You know, did, did the band feel that they really had to go out on a limb you know, to, to impress people because there was so much media focus on you guys. Well, I think, you know, that's the reason why we released the EPs early on, because we wanted people to decide about the band because of the music rather than all the hype that was written about them, you know. Mm -hmm. that's, that's the main reason why we did it. Right, right, right. And um, it's also, um, I mean, at the point that the album's only been out three months now, um, um, I was just reading on... And it went gold in its first day and starting at number one and... Uh, we're doing really well. We've just got a lot of sellouts so coming up in like four days, and everything seems to be going really well. I can't complain anyway. Yeah, because uh, the album to this point hasn't been released in the States. That's the next big thing, isn't it? It came out about two weeks ago. Okay, excellent. America, yeah. Okay, because you've got an MTV special coming up as well, don't you? That's right, yeah, yeah. So it's all, it's all uh, very busy for you at the moment, I'm sure. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, are, you, are you enjoying it, you know, as a band? I am, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm also between, between sort of doing promotion and stuff, busy writing the second album with my brother in the band. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why I'm back up in uh, Bradford at the moment. Uh, we've been all day racing today and we've got eight songs finished for it and we've got a title and everything. So I mean, but that's scary, isn't I'm, it? We're going to try and start recording it as soon as we can and get it out as early as we can, really. Mm -hmm, but now... Does this, I mean, uh, the Goodwill Art is still very, very fresh, very, very new. I mean, oh yeah, I mean, but you know, um, some of the some of the songs on there are really new. You know, Goodwill Art was only written really recently, and so it's come back to what you know. But um, I want to keep writing. It's what I do for a living. Yeah, know? yeah, yeah. The so, rock and roll style, but it's just in a kind of a uh, a nice addition, really. Sure, sure. I, I, I consider myself to be like a singer songwriter and. Um, I'm, I'm never happier than when I'm with a guitar and the band and just writing stuff, really. Right, so you haven't been jaded by rock and roll quite yet, eh? No, I, I avoid all the sort of parties and stuff where, you know, there's one queues for the toilet and they're not going there to go to the toilet, if you know what I mean. I know what you mean, I yeah. avoid all that sort, sort of things. It's, uh, it's better things to do in life. Yeah, well, I mean, talking about things like that, you, you're soon... Uh, uh, well, Richard uh, is, is soon to be married. Are, are you the? Are you the? He's got married. Yeah, he, uh, he came back off his honeymoon last week. Yeah, he's might been married for about three weeks now. So how's he playing? Uh, <laughs> he's all right still. He's still got the plan now. I think he's in the plan layers off. Ah, uh, uh, there we go. <laughs> um, just interesting as well. Um, you've also been included on uh, on a soundtrack, uh, Permanent Midnight. Uh -huh. 
um, which is interesting, with a track called Free Ride. That's right, yeah. Now, that track doesn't appear on the album. Is, is that one of the new tracks? Um, no, it's one of the tracks from the EP. Okay. We just, we just keep writing, like, um, we never sort of put these sides out. We just, as soon as we've got some good songs, we put them out. And EPs are just a really good opportunity to put out as much music as you can. And that's, all, that's what it's all about, really. It's not about making money and, you know, how rich and famous you can get, what car you're driving and all that kind of stuff. It's mm -hmm. about music, so... We just keep putting good songs out, so, you know, the EPs, the songs on the EPs are as good as the songs on the album, really. Mm -hmm. And it's actually good, because, I mean, the, these people who perhaps didn't hear those first EPs can uh, can go back and revisit those, because I think you built your fan base on the back of those EPs, um, in the, and now, obviously, more on a commercial level with, uh, you know, with a full-blown album. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And if, if you had to pick a track from the album, um, you know, uh, on the Goodwill album, uh, have you got a particular favourite? Um, I like Good Good People a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and I also like the title track, The Good Will Out. Those are my, probably my two favourites. Okay. Any, any particular reason why? Uh, well, Good Good People was just, just came so quickly when we wrote it. It was like, um, it literally took about an hour to write all the strings and the song was written and recorded in like three days. And it just seemed as though we were doing something really natural. And Good Will Out, I just like the sentiment. You know, the lyric in it. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I'll tell you what, Danny, if you can stay on the line, we're going to play that very song. Um, okay. And then, as I say, we'll, we'll come back with you straight after that. Do you want to hang on? Okay, cool. Thanks yeah. so much. Here we go. There you go. That's one of your favorite songs from the album, yeah? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now, um, getting back to uh, the album being released in the States. Um, Expectation-wise, uh, you guys are obviously going to be doing the whole touring thing and that. Uh, we're, doing, we're doing 20 days out there, yeah. That's, that's going to be... Uh, are, you, are you looking forward to that? Anxious? Uh, I'm looking forward to it. It should be good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And you're playing, what, right across North America? All the way across and Canada as well, yeah. Right, right, right. And uh, obviously going through all the material uh, on the album. And are, are you actually going to be playing any of the new songs uh, that you're currently working on at the moment? Yeah, we'll try and work some of them into the set. We also play songs from the EPs and stuff that we've done already as well, songs like that free ride that you were talking about mm. earlier on, so mm. there's quite a big set of the songs to choose from. Yeah, I think what you need to do is take all the EPs and, and slap them onto onto an album and then release them, you know, for, for, for all your new fans. I mean, I'm sure your die-hard fans who have been with you from the beginning will probably hate us, but, uh, you know, it's, uh, as, as you say, each, each of those songs uh, carry equal credibility, which is... Uh, which is, yeah, that might help, that might happen at some stage, but that, it'll be quite a while before we'll do something like that because we're too busy getting on with the new stuff, you know. Yeah, you did. Did you recorded some stuff at Abbey Road recently? Didn't you some some acoustic stuff? Yeah, no, we did. We did the full. We did it with a full band. And we did it with a forty-piece orchestra, and we just wanted to uh, see what it felt like doing all those with them live. See if there was any magic in there, because in the studio, it's all you, you play the stuff play the songs live as a band and then you have to go down to London to do the overdubs with mm. the orchestra and stuff simply because you couldn't fit 40 people and their instruments into the studio mm. that we recorded the album at because it was a really small community studio in, in Huddersfield for people who are unemployed. Mm. So I just wanted to see what it felt like uh, to play with the orchestra live, you know, one, two, three, four, and then everybody starts, you know, all 80 people. Mm. And uh, it was magical and, and, you know, the recordings captured that, I'm, I'm glad to say, you know. Mm. And definitely something that I'm sure that you would you would look at doing in the future again. Um, yeah, yeah, we'd have to do it differently though. I don't want to sort of repeat what we've done. Sure. Um, you know, but I'd love to work with other people. I'd really love to work with the Beastie Boys. I think they're an amazing band. Well, there we go. I mean, they they they're on sort of one of your sister labels, so I'm sure that wouldn't be an impossibility, yeah. Uh, they're quite busy, and so, <laughs> we, so it might never happen. But yeah. Um, yeah. I yeah. hope it does one day. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but now, as I say, you, you're you going to be doing all of these dates and so on. Um, it's gonna basically probably pretty much of the year taken up for you. So the, the chances of, of you coming down to South Africa at all on safari, um, not not in the foreseeable future. Well, I mean, it depends if people want to see us, you know. We want to see you. Oh, salesman. If, if people uh, want to come and see us play, sure. you know, we'll come down. But um, I don't believe in the sort of idea, the sort of, old colonial idea of going and conquering a country, I think it's kind of an unhealthy attitude, you know. Right. It's like um, business in America,
like there's like 350 odd million people there and I probably couldn't even take two of them on myself. You know? <laughs> so the idea of conquering a country is kind of a, a little bit arrogant. So, but if people like our music, then you know we'll we'll come and play, sure. Excellent, excellent. Now, Danny, we're going to ask you to do something that we've never done live on air before. We're going to actually ask you to do an ID for us. Right, as long as it's not too long. No, it's short and sweet. Um, <laughs> the name of the show is The Cutting Edge. Right. And, uh, yeah, you can play with that at will. Right, okay. I'm Danny from Embrace, and you're listening to The Cutting Edge. Fair enough. There you go. How's that? That was perfect. You see, I, don't, I think you've done this before. <laughs> <laughs> Well, well, Danny, listen, thanks. So, yeah, no, but I, th I think so. I mean, uh, as I say, considering that you that you insist on not living the rock and roll lifestyle, uh, the, I think the professional uh, professionalism aspect of the band is uh, one of the one of the rare aspects that makes it uh, such a pleasure. Well, I mean, it's not it's not so much that. It's just the idea that you know, if you take too many drugs and and go out too much, you've just not got any time to write songs, and that's what it's all about. It's, I mean, it's not about like fame and money and cars and stuff. It's about music, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, look, good luck with it all. As I say, we look forward to hearing uh, the new tracks. Uh, all right, thanks a lot. But thank you, and you have a good evening. Cheers on you, mate. Thank you. Bye now. Okay, bye.